I'll go into detail with that. But what we have here is a sculptural trail which goes through different phases of introducing this process. I don't think we have plenty of time to be able to do justice to walking all the sculptures, but we have an introductory phase, we have the epics of a goddess, we have the scriptures of one god, and then we have a Holocaust uh, memorial, which says what we learned from the 20th century is shifting paradigms from ideologies like Marx and Freud, Darwin and Hitler, to understanding what is universal in all stories, which is the paradigm of conflict resolution. And this is where I have a sculpture at the end of the Holocaust Memorial of a spiral staircase, I call it Jacob's Ladder, and on top of it I have Gorbachev, because Gorbachev freed us from communism by understanding the importance of restructure, openness and restructuring, which is basically scientific analysis of creativity. So Judaism is here as the evolution of the family, but what did Judaism contribute as the Abrahamic family sculpture that you belong? Is basically neutralizing the power of women. And instead of women creating conflict, <laughs> love is coming from God. <laughs> and God <laughs> is a much more reliable resource and inspiration than women. And we have <laughs> you have a very successful way of understanding uh, how to be happy by having a good father-son covenant relationship. In Greece, father and son killing each other. And because the mother gives a knife to the kid that says, go get the bastard. <laughs> and, and this is a very different, beautiful civilization. The Greeks were individualists, they good thinkers, great philosophers, but they didn't resolve conflict the same way. And in India, they would say, okay, stop desiring if you're in trouble, don't want to change anything. You know, be happy underneath the body tree. You know, just be content, breathe deep, you know, relax your muscles. So Judea is the first the alternative where you do have leadership. And what is the beginning of that? Abraham asking his son to be sacrificed to God. And so my story is that Abraham was testing his two wives. He had two kids, and his wives were competing with each other. So to see who has the right attitude, he says, God asked me to sacrifice a child. Which one of the two of you is going to let me sacrifice his child? And so Hagar said, no, don't, don't touch my son, I'll go to the desert with him. But Sarah said to the kid, listen to your father, and if he was to sacrifice you, I really would. Now, did Abraham sacrifice him? No. He was just testing both his wife and also his children. And so Isaac followed him. And so that was a big test of having a good family. And this is the beginning of the father-son covenant. And what happened to poor Sarah? She passed away because she was totally depressed about her son being sacrificed. It was the only child she had. And so this is, you know, seeing the dynamics of the family as a science behind, you know, the stories, the different stories. And so the Jewish family contributed a very nice moral paradigm and it inspired a lot of people to move away from all the old religions. But the problem with the Jewish religion is that it did not solve perfectly the relationship between men and women. So we have Alexander coming to Israel, influencing women to be pretty and naughty, getting pregnant, and then Jesus comes to save them <laughs> <laughs> from being harassed, being sacrificed. So you have the paradigm of the messianic religions as the political alliance between mother and child, rather between father and son. So you can see Judas being challenged by the messianic religions with a different political system in the family. And women want certain power, but they lost it, especially in Islam, where, you know, Muhammad is a very different prophet. And here you can see the analysis of religions as different ways of resolving conflict. 
And if you look at the different religions, the Abrahamic religions, you see a very different role model. And it is the prophet role model that creates the political structure of the religion. So what the difference between Jesus and Mohammed and Moses? And Jesus sacrifices, he's asexual, he's sympathetic and forgiving. And on the other side, Mohammed is a military man. He has appreciation for wife, but not for wine. He has 10 <laughs> lady friends in his, uh, in his history, uh, his record. And <clears throat> we have this kind of symbol of a woman not having rights, not being able to drive, not being able to go to school, you know, an oppression of women as intensified in Islam. So we have to look at the political structure of the philosophy as determined by personality types. So Mohammed is very different than Jesus and very different from Moses. And Moses is a person who has empowered himself gradually. He was also uncomfortable as a speaker and so on. And uh, he never totally made it to promised land because of his uh, difficulties. But it's, it's a model of leadership and his Ten Commandments are basically Ten Principles of Conflict Resolution, Moderation, Cooperation, and Respect. So he discovered in a way the scientific principles of conflict resolution. So what we learn from <clears throat> the different exhibits. So the first exhibit, I call it the Silver Fence, and it is around the tent. And what is the significance of that? Well, that is a sculpture of the unconscious resolving conflicts along the two phenomena of science. One is the pendulum oscillation, and you see the waves, three pendulum oscillations, leading to resolution, and the four spirals are representing the four different ways of resolving, along the distinctions of power and attitude. So, as you continue the walk on that uh, sculptural exhibit, you see the four relational modalities, and you see them as you have here, the four symbols of the card game. Now the card game is a very interesting symbolic art exhibit. It starts with a spade. What is the spade? It's a heart that is upside down and it's being poked. And it's black. And in the card system it evolves from the spade to the black uh, club which is also being poked. And then we evolve into the red diamond and finally the upright heart. Now, for whatever reason, you know, the game evolved as a very popular way of entertainment, but it is really the template of the unconscious. And the unconscious resolves conflict in four different ways, and also it evolves gradually moving from conflict resolved according to an ineffective way like the submissive antagonism to coming gradually to dominant antagonism in Greece, to submissive cooperation in India, and to dominant cooperation in the deal. And so what I created as a way of saying the application of the science is a game which is called more a monopoly. And each religion is a monopoly and we are learning <clears throat> to read the stories of its culture as a particular way of resolving conflict. And the game is comparing the evolution of the family stories in the Aztecs, and then Greece, and then India, and here is Judea and Messianic religions. And what the players learn is recognizing that stories resolve conflict, that they resolve it differently, and that the so the evolution of religions discovered as discoveries of science, of the alternative ways of resolving, and they evolve. And that the mind evolves predictably along the sequence of the science. So we have here the six of process as a story, you follow me? We have that also position within these cycles, which are like power and powerlessness, cooperation is clockwise, 
and antagonism is counterclockwise. So clockwise is right, red, and counterclockwise is black. So we have the possibility of graphically representing behavior, and this is what we have here as the six order process that unites stress, response, anxiety, defense, reversal, compromise as the plot of a story and as having alternative ways of resolving itself or graphically presenting that. So uh, the silver fence is an exhibit that presents the six sort of process as, a, as, as waves and it presents the resolutions as twirls, as the spirals. And the spirals are moving in this field of power and powerlessness in a cooperative way and an antagonistic way. And then you'll see how the four children of the Haggadah, the four children of the Wizard of Oz, the four prophets, and the four political presidential candidates are presented as different ways of resolving conflict in this uh, exhibit, which is presenting the unconscious as a yardstick, as a measuring rod, and understanding how to take them, this measuring rod in all the exhibits that we have and, and validate the theory by seeing that this explains the evolution of the paintings of the artist, the evolution of the uh, stories in the sanctuary, the evolution of the sculptures on the ground. So this is my introduction to the exhibits. We might not be able to see all the exhibits, but uh, as much interest as we have, the key is not really the art, but this is the concept. And the concept is very important because it changes psychology into a science. It reconciles psychology and religion. It reconciles religions among themselves. And it has tremendous dramatic influence in its applications. Psychotherapy, uh, by giving us wellness, uh, emotional education, it gives us clear diagnosis for wellness. So all of you can find out how you resolve conflict by doing this more sample testing and is available and it's free on our website and it is also diagnostic and therapeutic if you do the lengthy process of this emotional education now up there i'm presenting what kind of education of research we have inside in one hour is what you're doing now developing a better understanding of the concept enlightenment in one day is walking all the sculpture uh, all of the exhibits Wisdom in one week is completing the workbook, which has the, which is also online, and it's educational and therapeutic. And my mission in life and my vision is presenting this emotional education in the classroom. So at this point, let's walk. Uh, you have some questions? Yes. It, it, in, at least in the game, does the does the Greek tradition also encompass the Romans yeah. as well, or would you? Um, yeah, I have a card game okay. with a box of cards. Yeah. I'm still taking.